Welcome to another edition of Sparky Help, and this time it's the easy guide to how to complete a schedule of circuit details for an electrical installation. Thank you for taking the time to click on this video. I have many years of experience and like to keep up to date with research and developments. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you wish to post. All I ask in return is for one minute of your time to like and share, or maybe even subscribe. Again, thank you and enjoy. So coming up we'll look at how to complete the form. This form here, the schedule of circuit details. We used to have just one sheet that covered all of this information, now it's been split into schedule of circuit details and a schedule of test results. We're going to look at just this side alone. So let's start with the easy bits at the top. DB reference, well that's whatever it, the disk board happens to be called, all right? If it's in a house there's only one then it is the main distribution board or whatever you want to call it. But within a large commercial building it could be any number of disk boards and whatever their numbering system happens to be. Location, well hopefully that speaks for itself, I'm just going to make something up now for all of these things and say actually physically where is it, not up on the ceiling or anything silly like that, it's physically so someone could find it again. Where is it supplied from? Well, in this case, if we're going to go for a sort of domestic or even any commercial installation, the very first distribution board will be supplied from the origin. However, let's say you were in a domestic installation and you took a disk board out to the garage, and then therefore the garage will be supplied from the distribution board within the house. So it's just where is it fed from? Next one. What overcurrent protective device? That's what OCPD stands for. So what fuse or circuit breaker is protecting this board. So if this is the origin, then I'm going to go for a BS88-3, it could be a BS1361 or anything else that you happen to be. But remember, if it was within a building uh, or it fed another distribution board from a previous distribution board, it might be just a circuit breaker or a fuse or whatever it happens to be. What type is it? Well, this is a type 2, so we're going to go for that. And then the rating and setting of that protective device that happens to protect that one. So this is the origin. Let's go for 100 amp. SPDs, surge protective devices, what types have you got? Uh, so if you know what they are, if, you've got what, if you bought one and it's pre-made up, then it's got uh, a T2 in it, then put T2. Put whatever you happen to have. So I'm going to tick NA for my one here. And then we go down and fill in the circuit number. Well, obviously that's fairly straightforward counting away whichever you've counted away from, from the main switch or whatever the numbering system happens to be, as long as it's consistent, uh, there's circuit number one and then whatever the description happens to be. I'm going to make something up in all cases and go for a cooker. Type of wiring, this column number three, where you can see the codes are down the bottom. Fairly useful, I suppose. It's the information that is put on here. So whatever the type of the wiring happens to be. And I'm going to go for a twin and earth cable. So we're looking down that a thermoplastic insulated and sheathed cable. So I'm going to put in type A. Now what we have is the reference method. The reference method comes from either the on-site guide or BS7671, which obviously is a guide to, the on-site guide is a guide to that book. So unless you know them off the top of your head, but you can see how the cable happens to be installed. If it's installed more than one method, then what they're suggesting is you put the both methods down that you have to put in so you need to go and look them up and they come from appendix four of the regulations BS7671 by the IET and here's a, a very part of it here basically is about four or five pages of these drawings that have got drawings down the side and written descriptions and then the reference method is on the right hand side of its AB or whatever it happens to be. You can find them from other locations as well. Just before these tables, you've got descriptions. So there you've got reference method C, clip direct, for example. Okay, um, and then it's cable mounted on wood wall, so a gap between the cable is less than 0.3 times the diameter, which is clipped directly to it. And so you've got information within that. Or what you can do is go to, again, this is all within Appendix 4 of the regulations, you've got the current carrying capacities of whatever type of cable that you've already said it is. And if you look along the top here, what you can see are the different columns 1 to 8, and I've just shown a snippet of it. You've got methods of installation. So for twin and earth cable, which is what this happens to be, which is what I've suggested, you've got method 100, 101, 102, 103, and then method A, B, and C, which is clip direct. So for ease, obviously I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick something. Obviously, you decide whatever it happens to be, or however it's been installed, if you know. And then we put the reference method in, so I'm gonna put type C. 
Right, number of points served. I've tried to get information from uh, the IET and they've never answered me on what they clarify as a number of points served. Well, here's what the definition says within BS 7671. Point in wiring, a termination of the fixed wiring intended for the connection of current using equipment. So you'd think that hopefully that would be self-explanatory, but current using equipment, whatever that happens to be. So for a cooker, unless you've got two cookers connected to one uh, point, which is possible uh, as long as you're within the regulations, then we're just going to put in number one. So we're going to put one in there. Now the next columns, obviously we've always had this one, um, live conductors and CPC conductors. Uh, but now what we have there is his number and size of conductors. So what is a live part? This is what a live part is, a conductor or conductive part intended to be energised in normal use, including a neutral conductor, but not kind of by convention, a pen conductor. Pen conductor is what the electricity company would bring in, in fact, say TNCS, the combined protective earth and neutral. So when we count the number of conductors, uh, it's how many lines and neutrals in live conductors. So for the cooker, I'm going to go with it's a 2 times 6 mil. It's a twin and earth cable, so as we all know, or most people should know, is that the CPC is actually smaller in a twin and earth cable. So if you're not sure what they are, here they are. This is what the manufacturers make them to. This is the standard, the British standard to which they make the cables. And there you can see a 6 mil. Uh, twin and earth cable has a 2.5 CPC and there's only one in there so you put 1 times 2.5. So that's reasonably straightforward and then we move on to the overcurrent protective devices. So the first column there is BSEN number. So if it's a BSEN number that is, um, but you need to look at it to see what devices you've actually got. So here's a snip of one, this isn't the right breaker obviously, I'm just making stuff up, but you can see on here the BSEN is 60898. So we can put that information in and there you go. And then we can continue looking at the circuit breaker for the type. The type then it says B. Okay, so B, there is a B, C and D. Uh, watch out for a further video on what B, C and D actually mean. But here we have a tip B that goes in, so that would be where that information comes from. The rating, this is a cooker, this one is a B6 as a picture. I don't know why I didn't stick a 32 on there. Uh, probably because it's just the first one I come across. Um, but it would be whatever after letter after the letter, whatever number happens to be in there. So in a cooker circuit, chances are it might be a 32 or it might be a 40, depending on what you've put in. But I'm going to go for a 32 because it's just information. And then we've got braking capacity. The braking capacity in KA, so we don't need to put the multiple zeros in. That there you can see on the front of this breaker in the little rectangle on there and it says 6,000. Some manufacturers conveniently put them on the side, which is a bit of a pain in the backside if they're pre-installed boards or any board, um, and you just hope they're all the same. Uh, it normally isn't a problem domestically, but commercially it could become an issue, but you're checking the brake capacity. So all we need to do is put in six. Just so you know, the number underneath the 6,003 um, is an energy rating. That covers that part. What we've now got is maximum ZS. The maximum ZS then, where we get that from, is we get that from part four. And in part four, you look up your protected device in BS7671 and you look up the maximum earth fault loop impedance. And we can see on there then type B circuit breaker, BSEN60898 and RCBOs to 61009. It's got uh, 1.37. So that's what it is in ohms. So that's what you what is required, what the sheet actually says you should put on there. There are notes along the bottom which you can't see, but it should be 1.37. However, that's not very useful when you're actually on site testing and comparing. What you actually want is probably more likely the one from the on site guide. And if you look here, then you can see a 32 amp type B is 1.1. Why are they not the same? Well, it's to do with the temperature of which they're both at. In the regs book, the top one, they're at 70 degrees, and in the on site guide, they're at 10 degrees. When you test, you're more likely to be down in those lower temperatures. And the conductor this is, and obviously the conductor will probably warm up to the ambient temperature of the room, but the 70 comes into play when the cable is up and running and current passing through it. And as we know then, copper has a positive temperature coefficient, so when you heat it up, its resistance goes up. But my personal opinion, I would probably put the on-site guide one in and therefore put a 1.1. 1 .1. 
is what I'm going to go with. What you must also do then, this sheet requires, and there are again there are notes at the bottom of the sheet if you were to look, you just have to make a note somewhere on the form, um, it could be in the comments or at the very beginning, where those ZS values come from so if people wouldn't apply a correction factor necessarily, so at least they know what temperature they're at. There's a note to be required. Um, if it was an RCD, then obviously you would put information in, we'll cover that in a second. So that covers that part, let's go for another circuit, let's look at one for an RCD. So let's go for number circuit number two, a ring final, and this time it's going to be a type A again. We'll go for clip direct, and the number of points, well that goes to number of socket outlets or points of current using equipment. What you don't do is count double sockets as two, they're still counted as one. So I'm just going to make a figure up, there are eight sockets on this particular circuit. Number of conductors, well it's a ring final, so number of live conductors, there are two lines and two neutrals, so it's 4 times 2.5. How many CPCs are there? Well there are two cables, so therefore it's 2 times 1.5. Because they're sockets, we're going to make them RCBOs. Apologies for the blurry image, I didn't really notice it. Um, so on here then we're going to get the information and this is a 61009-1. So that information can go in, put the dash 1 in if you wish, but it's 61009. The type, well it's the overcurrent part and that is on the front as before and you can see it says a B. So that goes in, it's a type B. What's the current rating of it? Well it's the number after that letter and it becomes a 32. Braking capacity, well you can see on this one, slightly, it's slightly different. Obviously this wouldn't be a real life board because you've got different manufacturers potentially fitting in a board and as we know that's not really allowed because they don't really fit. Chances are unless you've confirmed it does. So the braking capacity in this case is a 10ka and then the maximum permitted. We'll come back to that. But let's move on because the next part is RCD part. So this is the RCD, so it's got overcurrent protection and it also says RCD, so the BSEN is the same. The type, the type is on the front, but it's a picture. Um, and let's say you need to know what the symbols actually mean. The top one, the sine wave in the box, that's the older style AC type, which remember uh, is advisable not to put in anymore. So they're sort of being removed because they don't particularly work on all circuits anymore with modern equipment and they may not function. Um, the one we've got here then is the second one down, which is the common one. If you probably bought a board pre-made up, this is the one it would come with because it has a part of a DC element to it that it will pick up on. And then you've got a Type F and a Type B, so if you're doing electric vehicle charging and things like that, um, then you may well be intended to put those types in, but read your spec. And there's more information. Again, I'll get around to do another video on RCDs because there's bi-directional ones now for those types of circuits where it is required. So we'll put the type in and that is a type A. The milliamp rating, well, you can see that on the front there, this says 30 milliamp. Sometimes it says 0.03 of an amp. So you just need to know that that's what it is in milli and therefore put in 30 milliamp as its milliamp rating. What rating is it? What current rating is it? Well, the current rating is a 32 again, okay, because that's the size of the breaker. That's how much it can actually switch. So that's its current rating. And all RCDs, if you bought an RCD as a standalone, you might buy a 63 amp RCD. That's what it's capable of breaking and switching, but it would still be a 30 milliamp if it was a standalone. But in this case, it's an RCBO. So that figure stays the same. Now we go to the maximum permitted ZS. Well it's a 32 amp again so we could go with 1.1 How and that's what the original table said. However it is possible that you might put an RCD in because your ZS's don't work or you might be on a TT installation and therefore you're never going to achieve these values in your ZS because your earth electrode is so high. So we have a regulation here it says where an RCD is used to satisfy the requirements of those regulations there. In other words, the disconnection times are 0.4 or 5 seconds, and you need to put an RCD to make it comply because it doesn't work, then you can actually use the earth fault loop impedance value from table 41.5, which I will show you in a second. However, there's a little bit on the end there that says overcurrent protected device shall provide protection against overload and fault current in accordance with chapter 43. In other words, a line neutral fault must still disconnect um, and it's just requiring you to make sure that all works still if you are putting it in because your ZS is oh so high. And if we go over to look at table 41.5, there's a little snippet of it. And there you can see four RCDs and RCBOs. This value here for a 30 milliamp can go up as high as 1,667. That's slightly rounded up, but it's 
if it's a high value, the chances are you're going to be well under that. So if you're putting it in because you don't meet the ZSs or it's a TT, then that becomes your maximum. But otherwise, I'm going to stick with 1.1 because providing it passes within that, to be honest, if it goes up, if it goes above it, it's still going to pass anyway because it's a 1,667. But that's the information that goes in there. So hopefully that's reasonably straightforward. But what about a three-phase board? So let's look at a three-phase board. How you can do that? Well, there you go. I've put uh, three circuits in. Uh, pretty much the same as before, just added another oven in. And you can see on the circuit number, all the only thing that's changed is I've said 1L1, 1L2, and 1L3. Okay, so there's your three phases, your numbering system. But let's put a three phase circuit in. Now you could do it over three uh, rows, but the problem slightly comes when you get to number of conductors, what you're going to write. So it's advisable that you put it in as such. So if we look here, there's just put number two, that means it covers all of those three, three phase socket. And so it's a type of wiring, type F. If we look down the bottom, that's an SWA. So a steel wire armoured. Its reference method is C again, it's clip direct. Number of points served, well there's one socket on the end of this. Number of live conductors, there are four. So the four in this case would be L1, L2, L3 and neutral. So there, we got that there. If you put that over three lines, so you did it as 2L1, L2 and L3 using three uh, lines up, it becomes a bit tricky what you write in each one because obviously L1 there'll be one, L2 there'll be one, L3 there'll be one conductor. So which one do you write the neutral in? Or do you just put bridge them, link them out and put four times 2.5? It, it just sort of becomes a bit, bit messy. So... Um, it's up to you how you do it, but you just need to indicate there are four conductors. What about CPC? Well, the CPC, chances are on SWA you might have run an extra conductor, but the armoring will play a part as well. So what do we put in? Well, the guidance suggests we do this. We go and look it up. And there you go, I've gone to manufacturer's information. So you go and find this manufacturer's information. It probably is in one of their guidance notes. I'm pretty certain it is in one of their guidance notes because there's a table that tells you where the SWA is no longer suitable and you have to run another uh, earth along with it, another CPC. So if we look along here, there we've got, a, I found a 2.5 conductor, four cores, and the actual cross-sectional area is 20. So what they're suggesting we do, we look all this information up, and then we'd write 1 times 20, and then we write the chemical element uh, letters for the whatever the material happens to be. So steel, we put Fe, so we put iron. Um, obviously, if it was copper, if it was a sheath of a, a cable, then we'd put Cu or whatever happens to be. This is what they're suggesting we put in to be correct. This is what the IET are guiding us to do. And then we put the information across 60898 type B 26 and maximum permitted 1.75. So hopefully that has been helpful. How to fill in this part of the information on a uh, schedule of circuit details. This is Sparky Help. Thank you very much.